What's going on everyone? Welcome back to 55 Phantom. So D23 has come. Come. And with it came all new announcements for new movies and TV shows, which is what I specialize in. So what I'm going to be doing here for you guys today is breaking down all the Pixar announcements. If you want to see all the Marvel announcements, go to my TikTok page and I'll be covering all of the actual Disney Studios movie and TV news in a separate video. So without any further ado, let's jump into the Pixar news. Kicking things off with a bang, Pete Doctor comes onto stage and he thanks the audience for the success of Inside Out 2. And he announces the title of the Inside Out spin-off called Dream Productions. Now, this is going to be, basically, it's the movie studio where Riley's dreams are made. And we're going to be getting a series on that. Very exciting for that. Again, it's not another Inside Out movie, but it's really good that we're finally getting a spin-off expanding the Inside Out universe. Just say, incredible? <laughs> then, Pixar made a very exciting announcement by announcing that Incredibles 3 is officially in the works. Very exciting. We didn't get any concept art, we didn't get any release date, so I think this is literally just an announcement. They haven't even started thinking about it yet. If I was to guess a release date, I'd say either release it the same year as Toy Story 5 in 2026, or maybe release it in 2027, or they might even really push it back to 2028 and make it 10 years after Incredibles 2. Now, we did report on Incredibles 3 being a thing uh, a few months ago, being in the works of Pixar, we were absolutely spot on. And Incredibles is one of my favorite Pixar franchises, so I'm very excited to see what they have in store. Now, the question arises as to where the story could go. Me personally, I'd love to see the pros and cons of supers being legal and how civilization views them. We also got a shot from the movie Elio. It's coming out summer 2025, just to keep it in everyone's minds. Speaking of originals, Pixar announced a new original movie, Disney Pixar Hoppers. And it stars John Hamm, Bobby Moynihan, and Piper Curda. And it's coming to theatres in spring of 2026. Now here's a photo of Hopper while I read you what it is. The story follows a young girl, Mabel, who can transfer her mind into a robot beaver with the goal of going undercover in the animal kingdom. I'm quite excited for that. It seems like... It's going to be a bit similar to Turning Red, but without all of the puberty stuff. And I think this has the potential to be very heartfelt. So I'm very excited for this. Pixar's first original series was also announced at D23. This is called Win or Lose. This follows uh, a baseball coach and his team and their road to victory. And it looks quite wacky weird and adventurous i am going to check this out however uh, although this is the first original show shows like monsters at work didn't really leave a lasting impression on me and they weren't as enjoyable as their movies uh, they weren't as good either however i am still going to check this out because why not now the thing you've all been waiting for Toy Story 5. We got uh, a few Toy Story 5 announcements. Let me walk you through them. So first we got the logo reveal. And the logo looks as you would expect it to look. But what is going to be happening in this film? Well, my friends, in this Toy Story sequel, the toys are going to be going up against electronics. Now, what I will say is that there was a report that Andy was coming back in this film. This concept art seems to debunk that theory and i think we're still sticking with bonnie in this movie and woody is back in bonnie's room so the concept art doesn't say how he gets back from the carnival maybe buzz is like hey woody it's electronics it's bad i need your help and he brings him back to bonnie's room um i will also say in this concept art there is no mr or mrs potato head so i think because both of their respective voice actors died they may have a really small role in this movie 
which is understandable. So I think the toys in this concept are, are going to be the main toys that we follow in the movie, which is great because we didn't see a lot of Jesse, Slink, Rex and Bullseye and Ham in Toy Story 4. Now, it seems like the toys are going to be struggling to compete against electronics. Bonnie seems to be an iPad kid. She's probably going to be watching Skibbity Toilet. She's probably going to phantom text Forky. She's probably going to say that Buzz has a level 10 cat. Hopefully they don't do that. Hopefully they make their own spin on the internet because if they added things like Skibbity Toilet, it would really outdate the film. But this was a direction that a lot of the fan base said to go in. Now, just because the fan base said to go in that direction, I don't think you should write this off. I think this is a great direction for them to go, actually. I'm very in intrigued by this, and it already seems like a better idea than uh, Toy Story 4, I'm gonna be honest. How this ends, though, all depends on how this film will end. Now, you're probably saying, okay, well, electronics are the villain, but who's the actual villain? What, like, where's the lot so hugging bear? Where's the stinky Pete? Well, because Disney can't stop making Buzz Lightyear ripoffs or Buzz Lightyear doubles, apparently in this film, there's going to be an army of 50 Buzz Lightyears that have gone into manufacturer mode or whatever, and they're evil, and they're going to be causing problems for Woody, Buzz, and the gang. 50 Buzz Lightyears. Goodness gracious me. I mean, we've had Buzz be Spanish. We've had the second Buzz in Toy Story 2 with the belt. We've had Chris Evans play Buzz. I mean, it's Buzz Mania over at Pixar. This seems to be following an idea from the scrapped plans of Toy Story 3, which I'm glad they are doing. I think that's a very good idea. So Toy Story 5, would I be lying if I said I'm not excited for this at all now? Yes, I'd be lying. I'm more excited for it than I was with 4. I think the concept is better. However, it is starting to grow old and it is starting to feel like a bit of a cash grab because that was everything from the Pixar panel at D23. What do you think? I think Pixar had the best panel this year, I can't lie. Stay tuned for the Disney panel video that I'm going to be posting. And again, if you want to see my reaction to the Marvel Studios panel, go to my TikTok. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.